Welcome to the Art of Healing with your host, Dr. Judy Jasek of Animal Healing Arts and Matt Rowe of Parsley Pet. During our show, we are talking about your pet's health, raw feeding, and alternative treatments for cancer, unexplained illnesses, and supporting your pet's natural ability to heal. Welcome, Dr. Judy, to this week's show. Thanks, Matt. Happy to be here and excited to dive into another new topic in pet health. Yeah, absolutely. And I just realized we have been doing this show for seven months. Have we really? Can you believe that? Like, no. this is, you know, all like everything that we're doing for the community as much as we can and helping them out. And this is just, this is fun. I mean, this is where yeah. we get to actually have a conversation that we don't often get to have with pet parents. Right. It is, and it may be questions. And when we really start to talk about topics for the show, we're thinking in the back of our minds, what do pet parents come to you to talk to, talk about? And the episode today kind of spawned off of that is you described an event when you see a patient and they come in with a tub of supplements. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. When they're doing that and they're coming in with that, do you think we, at some cases, are over supplementing our pets? Oh yeah, ab absolutely. I think I think because of all the marketing out there, and especially with the access online, you know, if a pet has whatever condition, whether it's kidney or liver disease or cancer or Cushing's, and you go online, you're gonna you could probably find a couple hundred supplements that could potentially help. But I think, and then there's a, a knee jerk reaction and, you know, pet parents want to do what's best for their pet. They want to make them healthy and they read all these great marketing claims. And my experience with the majority of supplements is yes, they probably work really well in some cases, but they're never magic bullets and they don't work the same in all pets. So mm -hmm. I like to do very targeted supplementation. If I'm going to start a pet on a nutritional supplement or an herb, I want to know that that is definitely necessary for that pet in that particular circumstance. So they're either have been tested for nutrient deficiencies, or if I'm using say a Chinese herbal formula, it's very specifically targeted for the pattern that, that I'm seeing in the pet. Because when you take you know, these supplements and, and I'll oftentimes ask the, the pet parent, well, do you know if these are helping your pet? Have you seen a difference? And usually I get kind of a shrug. Like, I really don't know. You know, they're doing it because they think it's the right thing. And they, you know, sometimes there's this point of view that more is better. Well, if I can put my pet on, you know, three more supplements, then maybe they'll get better. If you're not noticing a response, then you're probably throwing your money away and you may be in fact doing more harm than good because we can get some nutrients, as you know, in, in your testing with Parsley Pet, you know, some nutrients can be too high and can be toxic like vitamin D and, and other um, uh, fat soluble vitamins. The water soluble right. vitamins tend to get uh, peed up, but the fat soluble ones can accumulate. Plus if you look at the label, um, on, on some of these supplements, there's so many ingredients. And a lot of times there's fillers and preservatives and other chemicals and other synthetic things. And we're just we're giving the body actually a lot. We're actually making the body work just to process mm -hmm. all of these supplements and all these ingredients in the supplements. Yeah. And you had talked about um, in the pre-show is that when we do take supplements or we eat foods or anything like that, the actual the liver is having to to process all of these supplements that come in. And some of the supplements can have a slew of different synthetic vitamins and minerals within it that now the body is working overtime to process all of that. And it really can tax the liver at some point too. Right, and we'll see, you know, sometimes I see cases where we'll see, we'll do blood work and we'll see elevated liver enzymes and the pet otherwise is apparently healthy. So mm -hmm. do we have liver disease or is this just the liver processing it? You know, sometimes yeah. those elevated liver enzymes are just, they're the liver 
doing its job. So we mm -hmm. always want to continue to monitor those if we see those right. elevations. But I very frequently will, when I see a scenario like this where the pet's on lots of different supplements, there's some health condition, and especially if we have some abnormalities in the blood work um, or in nutritional testing, mm -hmm. then um, I'll drop them off the supplements. And I think you said you recommend the same thing. Like if, unless it's something that's medically necessary, they're on heart medication or something like right. that, any of the over-the-counter type supplements, then we stop them. You're not going to hurt anything by stopping them for a few weeks. And then just just get a new baseline and, yep. and see where the pet's at. And then we can start to reintroduce some things, but just one at a time. And then we see which ones truly have benefit for the pet. No, and I love how you said is create that new baseline because yeah, like you said, I mean, we'll see a dog come in and we'll test a dog based upon all the minerals and really trying to figure it out. But then in our intake form that we receive prior to testing is in the intake form, we might see a page of supplements because we do ask mm -hmm. what supplements are you giving your pet at this time? And we'll see a page come over of supplements. And then when we get the data back from the hair test, we'll see that they'll have specific minerals that are uh, over the dangerous level. They are extremely elevated. And instead of trying to figure out how we're going to do it, we oftentimes, and Dr. Kosher and, and you yourself, and this is just when we go around, we recommend dropping all the supplements as long as it's not medication that the dog has to have that was prescribed by a veterinarian. And if this is just over the counter supplements, we recommend dropping them all for two weeks mm -hmm. and really see if the dog's conditions improve to see if we can get those levels back into a healthy balance instead of keep flooding the liver with as many supplements as we can. And oftentimes when I teach a class about, you know, you know, nutrient testing and that type of stuff, the end of the class, I always say more does not equal better. Right. And you know, just you mentioned, you just yeah. said the word balance and that's another really important thing. All nutrients work synergistically with yeah. other nutrients. And if you right. have too much or too little of one, you're also mm -hmm. going to affect the absorption and the, the utilization in the body of other uh, nutrients that they tend to work together mm -hmm. with. And if it's, and if they're yeah. synthetics, you just have no idea how the body is able to utilize those. I'm, I'm very much a big believer in whole food supplementation. Yes. So I like to get as much nutrition as possible by mm -hmm. varying the diet. And then if there's yep. some specific thing, you know, we, I test a low vitamin D diet, vitamin D is very mm -hmm. important nutrient. So I'll, put the pet on a supplement for that. And then we continue to monitor it. And you don't mm -hmm. want to start a pet on things like vitamin D without knowing where the blood level is because they right. can get, uh, they can get toxic. But for the most mm -hmm. part, I try to um, create this nutritional balance with whole foods and, and whole food supplements. I like things like uh, like uh, microalgae, which mm. is a great, you know, it's got all the vitamins and minerals essential for life. Um, and it's, it's very safe. It's a whole food. It's, it's more like a dietary addition. It's not a synthetic uh, supplement. Mushrooms, mushrooms yeah. are great, great immune builders. And again, I look at mm. that as more of a dietary addition mm -hmm. rather than, a, so I like that phrase I, that just popped out of my mouth, a dietary addition rather than a, a supplement. I think, I'm gonna keep, I think I'm going to keep, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to keep using that. Yeah. <laughs> and that's really, and you know, for everybody watching right now is to really think of it as a dietary addition because you hit it on the head is whole foods are bioavailable, not only for us when we eat, when we eat certain foods that make us feel good and improve our health, what's well, the same things happening to your pet is when you give them that whole food, like the algae that's out there. And it's something that the body is actually absorbing and utilizing and recognizes, and then it can process it more efficiently. So we have less of a chance of it actually creating unbalanced levels. You know, when you talked about imbalanced levels, I mean, take a look at just copper and zinc. Those are two minerals we all have to have in our lives. Pets, every basically biological animal has to have copper and zinc. But if I have too much copper, it chelates out, which means remove too much of the zinc. So now zinc is load. 
and it shows me a lower level of zinc and copper's too high. So mm -hmm. oftentimes we don't recommend removing copper. We recommend increasing the zinc in the diet that they can get from whole foods. And that'll actually chelate the copper out because they have this synergistic relationship that they both play together in. So imagine if you're feeding a supplement, supplement that's really high in copper, then at that point, you can almost make a bet that zinc is going to be very low if you're not balancing zinc the right way. So sometimes just by removing it and stop feeding that piece, it allows the body to come back into homeostasis. Yeah. And the body knows how to do that. I mean, that's the thing you give it the right, you know, um, right diet and the right tools to use. And the body knows how, how to balance these things out. And I think that's the beauty of whole food, you know, diet additions is that, um, you're getting all these nutrients in the right proportions mm -hmm. that nature intended. And that is best for the body, you know, take, you know, if you're feeding a raw diet and you have ground bone, well, you've got a balanced mineral supplement in that ground, mm -hmm. ground bone. You have the correct calcium and phosphorus ratios. Mm -hmm. And when humans step in and try to mimic mother nature, they usually don't do a very good job. They, they, no. they don't mother nature, mother nature knows what she's doing in these, yep. <laughs> these whole foods in the diet. That's why yep. I like to use whole foods. Um, humans think they can properly replicate that, uh, with synthetics, but I honestly, right. I don't think that always works out so well. And I mean, when you look at pet food kibble, I'm going to shake my head. Oh my gosh. It's only really been around for 70 years, right? So what did they do prior to 70 years? ago. They fed more of off the counter, whole food, the dog killed rabbits, like, and I don't remember, and there aren't a lot of articles about dogs suffering. When you read about, you know, people living with their dogs 200, 100 years ago, you didn't read Fido, oh my gosh, suffering again from all of these ailments and everything going on, but because the dog was feeding, but it's eating more, I think a natural based diet of what was available to them because dogs are scavengers. They're gonna go eat whatever they can in that moment. But when they're doing it, they are creating that balance between what they need in their diet. Yeah, and, and when they're out in the wild, yeah. um, you know, they'll even nibble on like some weeds or something like if their body is craving, a certain nutrient, uh, dogs are very tuned into that intuitively and they'll, they'll know that's why sometimes dogs do go, you know, eat grass or eat plants mm -hmm. because there's certain nutrients there that, that their body needs and they will actually yeah. go, uh, seek those out or they'll seek out mm -hmm. minerals in the soil or things like that. So when your pet's eating some unusual things, one thing to think about is an, an actual nutritional deficiency. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we can really wrap our arms around what it means to have a smell 10,000 times greater than our own. I mean, imagine if you, I mean, what do they smell? Do they smell like the iron? Do they smell the nutrients? Do they smell specifically what they need in that moment? Because I know Leo right now, he's got a little bit of an upset stomach. He doesn't do well with raw chicken, but it's not that he's itching or showing any ailments but he just goes in the backyard and eats the crabgrass around my garden. Now mm. we don't put any chemicals on our garden or anything like that. So I let him do it. And I know he's doing it to balance his stomach. Once he gets it out of balance, we may not see him eat grass for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yep. I see my pets do the same thing. I know. And they're out there eat chowing down on the grass. Well, somebody's yeah. got a little, a little tummy ache and, yeah. You know, I just give it 24 hours or so, and it usually mm -hmm. just resolves just fine on its own. So really your dog, I mean, essentially knows. I remember there was a moment when I was feeding pumpkin to get a little bit increase in magnesium levels in Mr. Chacha or Chihuahua. Mm -hmm. And so, and I noticed I fed him pumpkin. He had eaten it every day for two weeks. And then one day I fed it to him and he didn't eat it. Mm. And I was like, well, that was odd. Why isn't he eating the pumpkin now? And then second time he didn't eat the pumpkin again. I'm like, well, he eats it all the time. And when I called my mentor about feeding and, you know, nutrition and that type of stuff, she looked at me and said, well, he most likely doesn't need it. Right. 
he smelled it and he just kind of realized, no, I don't need that anymore. And lo and behold, a week and a half later, when I tried pumpkin again, he ate it all. So really, it's, I don't think we give our dogs the credit for their own intuition on what they should eat. Now, I have opposable thumbs, so I get to choose what he eats. Mm-hmm. So as long as I'm feeding in regards to that balanced meal that's sitting up in there, then that allows me to make that step and really not have to put so much work into, oh my gosh, I got to feed this supplement. I got to do this one. I got to do that one. Unless there's something very specific at the moment, I kind of just let nature run its course. And I mean, you see both of our dogs. I have a 14 year old Chihuahua and a five-year-old Catahoula and they're both very healthy. Yeah. Yeah. And the, and the health and the balance comes through the rotation, doing different, Mm. different proteins, adding in, you know, maybe some additional organ and, or some Mm. fish and some tripe, some egg, you know, in these, some of these different body parts um, all have nutritional value. And the more of that, that you can rotate in, those are the quote unquote supplements, or I guess I'm saying, you know, you know, dietary additions that, um, that's, that's where you get the balanced nutrition from. And, Mm -hmm. and, you know, you can read the labels on, you know, some commercial pet foods and they'll say, oh, this is AFCO for fellows AFCO standards, which those standards are really weak to begin with, but that's just on paper. That's not, Mm -hmm. that's not biology. And so if, they, they can make a diet look quote unquote appropriate on paper, mm-hmm. but that does not mean that those nutrients are benefiting your pet, that your pet can even utilize them. Right. And that's the tough part. So, I mean, really what you're pointing to is whole food, use whole food as your supplement. Eggs is a great addition. I mean, I mentioned pumpkin on here is a good addition. You know, raw goat milk, I'll put in every once in a while. But if I'm really wanting to put a supplement in, where should I look at supplements and what should I look for on the label? Well, first of all, you don't want to be feeding anything that you can't pronounce. So if you see a bunch of chemicals, um, you don't even need to know what they are. If there's a bunch of chemicals and you don't even, you can't even pronounce the words, don't, right. don't give it to your pet. Don't take it to yourself either. Don't, you know, that's, that's yeah. kind of one of my standard um, go-tos. You want to know exactly mm-hmm. what's in it. And most supplements I use, they'll have just a couple of ingredients. They'll have just two or three whole food um, ingredients. There's a company called Ancestral Supplements that mm-hmm. is actually a human supplement company, but they have all different kinds of organ and glandular supplements. Like they mm-hmm. have pancreas and spleen and brain and lung and all these different things. And you look at the label, there's one or two ingredients. It's usually whatever is on Mm -hmm. the label that you're feeding. So say it's pancreas and sometimes there'll be like some additional liver or something. It's just one or two whole food ingredients. So Mm -hmm. that's the type of thing that I like to add in. Um, The algae, algae has so much nutrition in it that I, I like to add that in. If if we know, say, we're not getting enough mineral in the diet, like say for whatever reason we're not getting ground bone in the diet, um, we we don't, you know, the the dog isn't doing well. We decide to pull the bone out and see if that helps, or pull the bone out so we can lightly cook the diet. Mm-hmm. Um, then I might add in a, a mineral supplement that's mm-hmm. just you know has the basic trace minerals, um, calcium, phosphorus, just to make sure that we're not going to get deficient. Cause I know that that mm-hmm. mineral component has been removed from the diet. Right. And you mentioned cooking, cooking can actually lower the mineral, um, content in the food that we're feeding. So if I actually took the raw food that I feed Leo and Mr. Chacha and cook it, it can actually degrade it up to 40%. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to cook, you know, unless there's just some pets that just won't eat raw. So we try to at least like thoroughly warm it or, or Mm -hmm. lightly cook it. But yeah, absolutely. As soon as you start um, cooking, you're going to be, you're going to be altering the, the end nutrition in the food. Mm -hmm. So really is, you know, take a look at the supplements that you have currently right now that you're, that you are feeding your dog read through the label. If you cannot pronounce any of the ingredients, sadly, I would get rid of that supplement. 
and move on to something else or really cut the supplement out and see how your dog does. And that'll save you money in regards to whether or not you think you should or shouldn't. Then as you go to add stuff back in, think of it more from a whole food side and making sure that it's bioavailable for your dog. Because I think at some level we overcomplicate all the nutrition that we want to do for our dog. Because I mean, I know I humanize my pets a little bit and thinking, oh, if this is good for me, this has got to be good for them. And Mm -hmm. I immediately transfer it over to their bodies when really ultimately maybe they don't need that. And yeah. as a human, I do, but a dog doesn't. It's different. And all of us humans are different too. And we all need, there's no, there's no one size fits all when it yep. comes to nutrition. There's a lot of dog food companies and, and supplement mm-hmm. companies that would like you to believe that. Oh, just, you know, yeah. put your pet on this supplement and it's going to clear up all these different things. They're going to be so right. healthy. And you, you will usually see a couple of really great testimonials. And I think, mm-hmm. again, all these supplements do work really well in a few cases, I have never seen one that works even in the majority, you know, I can see something like I was a client come in and I think a lot of times to, you know, some of these clients just hit on something that's really good for their pet because they're tuned into their pet energetically and they'll, mm-hmm. they will find something that they feel like really helped their pet. And I can try it on right. 10 other pets with the same uh, symptoms mm-hmm. and it doesn't work, you know, yeah. um, but I sort of argue with success, but mm-hmm. Um, I think that this over supplementation can be a real problem and it's expensive. You know, when I talk Mm -hmm. to people about improving the quality of the diet and then they ask about cost and they'll be, you know, sometimes are, well, I don't don't know if I can afford that. And then I'll ask, well, how much are you spending on supplements every month? Mm. Because a lot of people are spending easily a hundred bucks or more on supplements. And if you can eliminate those supplements, put that money towards a better diet your pet's mm-hmm. going to be so much healthier and that, that money is going to be so much, so much better spent doing that. Yeah. And hopefully you'll go into the vet less often. Sorry to say that with your business and everything. Right. You know what? <laughs> That's okay. I'd rather see, you know, I'd rather, I, I love one of the things I love doing is, you know, working with puppies because mm-hmm. I can, I can work at getting them off to, to a good start mm-hmm. in life. Yeah. And my goal is to get them off to a great start and then I don't see them for years, you know, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I would love that if, if, you yeah. know, patient, there's enough sick pets out there. I'm not really worried about running out of things right. to do. But I really do love the opportunity to get pets started on the right track and, and help educate people on how yeah. to keep it that way. I, I like to see pet parents advocating for their own pets and knowing what to do. And then they're not going to just fall a victim to Mm -hmm. the the marketing propaganda that is so prevalent out there. And that's why you are an incredible vet, like in your thought process and how you think about that, because you're looking at it as not just making another sale or coming in and getting a client for, you know, another, you know, treatment this year, you're looking at it from the whole picture of how can I help this dog be as healthy as they can throughout their entire life? So what is the best way that somebody can find you? So my uh, practice name is Animal Healing Arts and my website is ahavet.com. Our email is info at ahavet.com. And my phone number is 720-515-2421. And I do do in-person visits here in Colorado. And then I also do phone and Zoom. If you're not in the area or if you want to just hop on the phone and, and mm-hmm. I can review records, past medical history and things like that. So I have a number of different offerings. And I highly recommend you take this time to reach out to Dr. Judy because she's going to take a look at your pet's health for the long term, not just leading you to the next treatment or leading you to the next event that she has you know, with you at the office to treat something else. No, this is about total health for your pet and having your pet live this awesome, healthy life that you want them to. So um, you can always reach out to us at parsleypet.com and you can get your dog nutrient tested and figure out, am I feeding the right supplements? Am I feeding the right diet for my pet? And that is the nutritional blueprint. So thank you, Dr. Judy, so much for being with, with me today. Thank you, Matt. It's always always a pleasure to be here.
Oh, I love this show. And uh, we'll talk to you soon and we'll see you next week. Okay. Sounds great. All right. See ya. Bye. Bye.